It's Monday, to raise water in the nursery. She just got some stuff ready in the tree plot and I spent all morning foliar fruiting. So all the tunnels, all the beds, got the seaweed on there. So cucumbers are doing real good. They're about ready to be trellised. Um, we don't trellis them in the beginning to let them gain some strength in their stem and focus on root production. So they're getting pretty good in size. So probably next week we'll have a few available. Um, and then after that it should be weekly for a while. Say what? It's gonna be daily cucumbers. Oh yeah. People only buy them once a week though. Yeah, but we harvest them daily. Mm-hmm. Geez, sorry. <laughs> I was just, you know, overhearing what you were telling everybody. Yeah, talking in the camera out here, working by ourselves. It's so weird. <laughs> just a turmeric starting to sprout there. So probably like two weeks it'll start poking out of the soil, I bet. But mm -hmm. we're gonna have to cover it for that cold snap. The first tomato flowers showing up. This is a banana tree, guys. So I don't know if these are edible or whatnot, but I bought this tree six years ago and this is the first time it's ever flowered. So it's really cool. So I've been thinking about switching up camera stuff. Uh, this camera is really beat up and it's expensive and I leave it out in the rain and use it in the rain and everything. So, um, and I use the GoPro thing for the time lapses and the slow-mos and all that stuff. So uh, I was thinking, What's the matter of what I think? So I'm gonna ask you guys if you prefer me to still use this camera or switch it. This one has stabilization in it and whatever. Um, but the microphone, um, I'm gonna have to get a better microphone for it, but I'll show you what it's like now so you can see the difference. Okay, here's the other camera. So the audio would be better, but like if I move it, which I do a lot, it's more stable. But I was looking at it and it doesn't look like I don't know, it doesn't give you a feeling you're, like you're there, I guess, for me, but I don't make the videos for me, so I make them for you guys, so just let me know what you think and see if you like the way it's been, if you would prefer I talk into this thing, um, whatever. I can still show everything that I'm already doing, but there's, this, this just might be a little higher quality. So we're just going to go ahead and plant these with weed mat. Uh, it's really kind of the same thing as severing the tarp here, but we don't really have much time. We need to get more stuff in the ground. Uh, it's just a reality of... Uh, you know, paying our bills doing this. So we're gonna go ahead and plan into that. We'll be pruning these oaks this week. My old coworker Renee is gonna come up and the one that needs it the most is the far one uh, due to the direction of the sun, which comes down this way. And this middle one, we're gonna pr start pruning to eventually take it out because it's being outcompeted by this tree and this tree. But I'll explain more of that um, on Wednesday. One of the deal breakers for us in this uh, new leaf compost was how well we could direct seed into it. And it's pretty good. So we'll definitely be getting more of that stuff. And it's half the price. So for today, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna start cultivating. We've already done the foliar furts. We've already got the weed mat ready. Um, tomorrow's the planting day. So I'm gonna stay on that cultivation schedule. I've noticed a lot of like, the warm season grasses are starting to pop here. And once they start, it's insane. So. It's one thing to build new beds and, and plant them. It's a whole other thing to maintain them. And then now that we're in the summer, we're in like the time where we flip beds fast. So now we have to harvest, plant, cultivate, uh, compost, amend, all that stuff. Um, probably two to three times faster than when we've, what we've been doing it um, in the previous videos over the winter and into the early spring. So I got this cool new method of irrigating now with the drip tape and the and just to do drip and overhead. It's pretty cool. It's busted drip tape. Water in the celery and the fennel at the same time. Okay, another day. Opening up the tunnels, seeing how the tomatoes and cucumbers are. It was 43 last night, so we double covered. And we've got some Pretty cold nights coming up, 34 and like 35, 36. So 
probably just to test the microphone again and the GoPro versus the camera. Let's see what you guys think's better. Plot planting today. Yeah, we're gonna start in the front plot and get that started with spinach, salnova, kohlrabi, uh, or no, spinach, mirror, and kohlrabi, pak choy, top choy mix. Ooh, dang, big day, guys. Uh, lots of planting, cultivating, watering, just tons of stuff. And tomorrow's gonna be the tree day. And while Renee and I are doing the trees. Victoria will be harvesting and, and getting ready for the cold. And then when we get down to trees, um, uh, I'll prep for the cold. So the plan is to prune these three oaks. Pretty big job. But Renee's a really good climber. And that helps because I haven't climbed much in a while because we've been doing all this. So that should be pretty cool. Okay, tree day finally. So like this big limb here. There's a couple of bigger limbs that grow up into nothing here. There's some bigger ones in the backside. Some of these hanging ones here over the tunnel. And the low branches over here for when the sun comes up this way. So these trees were topped, which is like the worst thing you can do to trees. So that like where, they, where you see like the whole upper part of the canopy cut out. So the canopy is super dense to make up for this lack of structure. So we're just gonna come through, thin it out, take out some big branches, try and give some structure back to it. Yeah, it's really not something you fix right at once. It's gonna take more times. It's gonna take more days working in these to really fix them. It's gotta get done, so. You can see the difference in this grass where we tarped it the other week. It's starting to kill it off pretty good. This azalea looks awesome. So to set your rope in the tree, you throw this bag with this line up into the canopy and then there's different climbing methods but that's how you get it up there. Oh, that my rope was on? Uh -huh. I probably should, huh? Yeah. <laughs> kids, kids. Remember, kids, kids. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> hey man, I don't climb anymore. Give me a break. <laughs> Okay, we just finished these up. Big thanks to Renee. Uh, he did most of the climbing. Uh, I had a ton of groundwork to do to make to like keep it clean and everything. Um, and he's a really fast climber, so it just makes sense to do it that way when there's this much work to do. But you can see on these tunnels, uh, especially back here, that was like full dense shade yesterday before today. And so now it makes a big difference. That'll really help the crops out and the uh, tree plots here and up there and definitely in the tunnels and the shade on the ground that was a real dense shade and now it's probably split half and half sun and shade so yeah a lot of work you all can see all the brush piles so same thing on the other side of the trees and then and there's the saw for reference on things that i was cutting for firewood So that's a pretty good bit taken out of these oaks. General rule of thumb is you don't want to prune more than 25% of the tree's canopy, and we weren't even close because these trees are huge. But since they were topped, there was just a bunch of stupid growth, things growing into nowhere, and it just made sense if I had help to go with this hard on them. So that now it's easier for me to manage them uh, as I need to. Renee and I are trading work. Um, I'm taking the BCS to his house in the fall and we're gonna redo his lawn. So adding the amendments, adding the compost, putting the seed down, uh, probably some irrigation and all that stuff. But yeah, it's cool to trade um, work and skills like that. Just kind of realized some of y'all might be wondering why we went through that trouble to do that. So I'm gonna try and give y'all um, perspective here. So here's the three tunnels and the old uh, canopy line was like right here. So the amount of shade that was cast from the sun being angled this way, or this way, was a lot more. Especially with the thicker canopy. So now that they're a lot cleaner, a lot more sun gets through. And in the winter, the sun will come up over here and be lower in the sky, allowing the sun to come through the canopies better to this plot, the tunnels, and the, uh, plot on the other side of the trees. I wanted to get some drone shots but it was super windy so we have a cold front coming in so that's what we have to prepare for now. Renee and I worked together for like three years so it was great to work with him again and yeah we pruned a lot of trees together so it was cool to still be able to do that and then still be able to market garden stuff. What's up George? Uh, just putting out row cover. <laughs> So row cover pile, I guess it's good that we didn't really put much of it away because we need it again. Uh, we're just gonna cover the tender things. So uh, the newly transplanted stuff that hasn't gotten established yet, um, our salad mixes, because we know we're definitely gonna need them. We're gonna cover the arugula so it doesn't get slowed down. Yeah, the onions and the garlic, they'll be fine. We're definitely gonna double cover the tomatoes and cucumbers, obviously. 32 degrees, some frost, so Definitely running the irrigation on everything. Got two pots going right now, and that should help warm the plants up and melt any frost off the leaves right at sunrise here. So it's about to be heating up here soon. Most everything else that's outside should be good. It's just like uh, some small beets and like baby kale mix that we don't want to get slowed down. Looks like everything outside did pretty good. So we got an inch of rain coming tomorrow. Uh, it always sucks when it rains on Saturdays because it's the market day, so it's supposed to start at 10, so hopefully um, hopefully everybody gets there early and it's not like a super slow day because we did harvest a lot. We've actually had a really dry April, which um, if, 
for people that have been following along, you know how much it's rained here. It rained 80 inches last year. Uh, it's foggy in the lens, but tomatoes weren't even phased by that. So we seeded arugula in this bed and hand watered it and tarped it. Uh, the tarp was there to keep some warmth in with the cold nights. You can see here it's starting to germinate. So we'll pull this off later today, run the wild birds again to keep the top of the soil moist, and then tomorrow when it rains that they should take root and then grow really fast. The cucumbers in there did good. Yeah, cucumbers like are like really exciting when they first come on and then like you eat like three or four hundred of them and you're like, wow, I'm sick of these things already. Here's another view of the oaks that we pruned this week. All of that front plot is in full sun. And this is and this is all in shade, this soon to be plot. And the shade will go like this. And then the afternoon will be sunny here and shady up there. Coffee? Yes. What you think about this banana, George? It's crazy. It's so cool though. They got a little. Yeah. Like the end flower pod deals. I've never seen that in real life, so that's really cool. Yeah. Pretty big harvest, that's a lot of totes. Got it. so over here as well. It's the honey hogs order. Well, part of it. So yesterday was the first day that I didn't really do anything for wash and pack. Um, I normally do the wash tank, and this week Janie did it. So good job, Janie. Head lettuce, salad mix, collars. Uh, there's beets and carrots. Yeah, there's a good bit this week. So today is going to be. So today's gonna be, I almost just fell. Uh, <laughs> so today's gonna be Tori doing pre-orders, um, getting ready for the farm pickups in the market, and I'm delivering, and then harvesting another toad with carrots, flipping beds, pulling row cover, getting ready for the rain, doing work. Delivery time. All right guys, that delivery to the honey hog puts it at over 2200 pounds of salad that we've delivered there they have future plans for other things too so looking forward to uh, you know supplying carrots and other cool stuff other than just greens have you won the cucumbers yet nope i've eaten like 15. Hmm? i've eaten like 15. <laughs> you've eaten yeah. oh have i eaten i thought yeah. you said it did you run the irrigation yet? Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I've eaten a lot. They're good. They are really good. Yeah. Prepping this for carrots. I think this spinach was in here since December. Yeah. We harvested off of it all winter. Yep. This one and the other bed come up too. Probably gonna need to broad fork it. Think so? Yep. This is good soil, but just in case. Adri. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, let the YouTube fam know how Emma's doing. She's doing really good. She's just in a lot of pain. And yeah. Your shoes are untied. They're not. They don't have laces, you dumb butt. <laughs> Productive day. Yeah. I was doing farm pickups and Casey and the A team did all the work. Mm-hmm. Carrots, too. Yeah. Um, Writing it all down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I didn't do that in carrots. Uh, I'm gonna do that in turnips tomorrow because by the time those carrots are ready to harvest, there's a succession there and a succession here. Um, the turnips will be ready at the same time. I like it. Did you get here? Um, that's the red sun carrots. So I showed you guys the leaf compost on top of the beds. Looks like that. And then um, mixed in about a half inch with the BCS. Looks like this. This is way better to seed into than just leaving it on top. There's one right there. Potato. That's the Adirondack blue. Mm-hmm. Nice. This rain tomorrow is going to make the potatoes explode. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool to see that. I haven't looked at it yet from the roof. 
haven't done rooftop shot in a while so so here's the farm and here's the trees we pruned there's plot 10 with the three tunnels a lot of people seem to appreciate the tour so plot one that's all the garlic plot two plot three four five six seven eight back there nursery tunnel plot nine plot ten can't leave this guy in the rain nope this is the important. This is the wheel hoe. This is probably our most used tool for flipping beds. Yeah, makes it really easy. So, cost single wheel hoe if you guys are looking for a new garden tool. It's in the description.